Suppose you took on a new job and all of your colleagues thought you were not only unqualified for the job, but that you were also overweight. Then what if your boss came to you and asked you to do something so important that your entire organization literally depended on whether or not you succeeded? And what if your boss was George Washington? And your mission was to get a crap ton of cannons. Otherwise, you'd lose the war for American independence. And you and your co-workers would all be hung. Life is awful, but sometimes adding a missing piece or perspective can change something awful into something full of awe. I'm Seth Adam Smith, and this is Awful Inspiration. Hey guys, and welcome back to Awful Inspiration, a show where I share a story, a true story, that might sound awful at first, but if you step back, maybe add uh, a missing perspective or a letter, uh, the meaning of that story changes from something awful into something that's full of awe, as the intro just explained. Now, Awful Inspiration is a daily morning show. I do this Monday through Friday. I took a short break last week to write some new episodes, create a brand new intro, which I think you just saw, uh, and, and a new outro as well. You'll see that at the end of this. And to set up the podcast version of this show. And by the way, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, go ahead and check out the link below. Now, today I want to share with you a story from the American Revolutionary War. Uh, there's a quote by David McCullough, the author of 1776. It's a great book, by the way. He wrote, in history, character counts over and over. Now, with that in mind, one of my favorite stories from the Revolutionary War is about a man of character. I mean, by all accounts, he was uh, actually an unqualified man uh, of character, but he was a man of character and a man who refused to quit, even when it seemed like all hope was lost. At the end of 1775, the American fight for independence was on the brink of ruin. In their attempt to seize Boston, the well-trained and highly equipped British troops fractured and demoralized the ragtag Continental Army. Then, as that bitter year drew to a close, most of the enlistments for the troops in General Washington's army expired. In fact, things got so bad that General Washington, who rarely ever allowed himself to show signs of discouragement, he was a showman uh, in many ways, he sent a letter to a friend saying, quote, Few people know the predicament we are in, close quote. He went on to say that if he had known what he was getting himself into, he might not have accepted the command as general. And yet, two months later, almost exactly, General Washington's forces surrounded Boston with heavy cannons, forcing 11,000 British troops and 1,000 loyalists to evacuate the city. In a bloodless maneuver, Washington had managed to revive the American cause and change the fortunes of the war. But how? How did General Washington accomplish such a feat? What happened during those two months that renewed Washington's will to move forward? Two words, Henry Knox. Henry Knox was a 25-year-old bookseller who enlisted to serve in the Continental Army. He had no prior military experience, but he had read books about it. He had read books about military experience. So naturally, he was promoted to colonel. I mean, you see what I mean about unqualified. But, you know, I kind of like it because Henry Knox was a man of character. In fact, he became such good friends with Washington that he was one of the only two officers who stayed loyal to George Washington throughout the war. One of two. In November of 1775, General Washington asked Henry Knox to retrieve heavy ar artillery, which would be cannons, from the recently captured Fort Ticonderoga in New York and bring them to Boston. 
Now, the assignment was no easy task. Knox and his men had to move 60 tons of artillery, 60 tons of cannons, across hundreds of miles of bad roads in the middle of winter. While crossing the frozen Hudson River, several of the cannons broke through the ice and sank to the bottom. And yet, each cannon that fell was faithfully retrieved. Each cannon was retrieved. Initially, Knox believed that the expedition would take him only two weeks, when in reality it took him uh, ten weeks, so it was a, a little bit more uh, than what he had originally anticipated. You know, two weeks versus ten weeks. It's, maybe, maybe books didn't quite tell him how to do that kind of math. But his late arrival proved to be just in time, giving General Washington the confidence and the cannons to move forward and take Boston. In fact, they surrounded uh, the city of Boston. Boston's on uh, basically a peninsula. They surrounded the city of Boston on either side. Um, and General Howe, I believe his name was, he woke up and said something to the effect of, my God, these men can do more in one night than we can do with all of this time that we had. Of Knox's expedition, David McCullough wrote this, quote, Knox's noble train had arrived intact. Not a gun had been lost. Hundreds of men had taken part, and their labors and resilience had been exceptional. But it was the daring and determination of Henry Knox himself that had counted above all. The 25-year-old Boston bookseller had proven himself a leader of remarkable ability, a man not only of enterprising ideas, but with the staying power to carry them out. Close quote. I think this story has a lot of parallels in our own lives. Perhaps we sometimes feel like Henry Knox, that our road is cold and harsh, or that our task is maybe a bit more difficult than we had originally anticipated. So if you're struggling on the road that leads to a brighter day, don't give up. Someone believes in you and is counting on you. At other times, we may feel as discouraged as General Washington we might be tempted to think that our cause is collapsing, that we can't move forward. But if you're engaged in a good cause, don't give up. There's an unqualified, overweight man of character who is on his way, and he's bringing a bunch of cannons with him. And when you think about it that way, that's pretty inspirational. Henry Knox said, Quote, the eyes of all America are upon us. As we play our part, posterity will bless us or curse us. Close quote. Remember that. And thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. But remember, no matter what happens, make today an awful day.